All right, today we're going to be working on some properties of exponents that you guys should have worked on as well, um, just to review some of those. And you can always look in your book too if you want a list of those handy, that might be a good thing to do. All right, problem number one is a problem that just says h to the fourth times h to the seventh times h to the third. And make sure also we read the directions. So it says the final answer should show each different variable written only once with this resulting exponent and all exponents should be positive. So what that means is right now I see three h's, I have to write that so it's only one h. And because we're multiplying these h's, that means we're going to go ahead and add those exponents. So we're going to end up with h to the four plus seven plus three. And when you go ahead and add those three numbers together, that gives us h to the fourteenth. I have my one variable written once with an exponent that is positive, so I know that is my final answer. Okay, problem number two, I see two different variables on that one as well as some coefficients. So what we're going to do is just multiply our coefficients together. Since all these parentheses mean we're going to be multiplying. So we're going to multiply five by six and that's going to give us thirty. Then I need to multiply my a's together and then my b's together. Because remember, we can only have each variable written once. And again, parentheses mean multiplying. So multiplying means we have to add those exponents. So we'd have a to the four plus two and we'd have b to the three plus eight. And you don't have to write this stuff out every single time, but I think it's good for the first few times for you to get the hang of these problems. So that'll give us 30, and then we'd have a to the 6th and b to the 11th. Again, I have my variables written only once, and all my exponents are positive, so I'm done. That's my final answer. Okay, number 3 also has two variables to it, but you'll notice this one is a dividing problem. So that means we're going to need to use the rule that when you divide, you subtract your exponents. And we can kind of break these up so you can see them separately. So those are our m's there, and these are our n's over here. And of course I kind of wrote over each other, so hopefully you guys have the problems printed out, you can see those. So that's going to give us m to the 4 minus 3, because those are both of my exponents on the m's. And then we'd have an n to the 8 minus 2, since those are my n exponents. And you notice I did the top minus the bottom. That's the order you always have to go in. I know the 4 is bigger than the 3, but if they were reversed, then, well, we'll deal with one of those later. Um, but you always do the top minus the bottom. So that's going to give us m to the 1st and n to the six when you subtract those. And you can leave it like that, or if you don't want to put that one exponent, you can write it as m n to the sixth. So either of those two answers would be good. Again, I'm only seeing one var each variable once with a positive exponent on it. Okay, problem number four is similar, but I don't see any common variables in here. I see an a, I see a b, and I see a c. So all those variables are different. But what I do notice on this one is there is a power on the outside. So now we've got to go to our next rule, and this one actually combines two of them together, where you have to distribute this power through. So that means it's going to go to the 3, the a to the 4th, the b to the 6th, the 5, and the c squared. And I also have to then use the rule that when I have a power to power, I multiply those numbers. Okay, got a lot to remember here. And don't forget your coefficients, because those are very easy to forget in front there. So I'm going to end up with, let's write all this out, come on, all right, 3 to the third, then we'd have a to the 4 times 3, since we multiply those exponents, powers to powers, then we'd have b to the 6 times 3, again, powers to powers, but then you notice again in our denominator, I've got a coefficient here, so this is going to be 5 to the third. That's one thing that gets tricky about these, is you have to remember your coefficients act different than your variables do. So here I'm doing a power, where here I'm multiplying. Okay, so you've got to keep those straight. And then we'd have c to the 2 times 3, because again I've got a power of 2 here and a power of 3 here, so I have to multiply those. 
Okay, when I simplify all this, that gives me 3 squared, I believe, is 27. And then I'd have a to the 4 times 3 is 12. b to the 6 times 3 is 18. Divided by 5 to the 3rd is 125. And we'd have c to the 6th power. So I have three variables, but they're all different, so I'm good there. All the exponents are positive, I'm good there. And my coefficients here, 27 over 125, well, I don't think that can be reduced at all, so that's going to be our final answer. If those two numbers did have a number in common that you could factor out, you can reduce it down, but yeah, that's good for this problem. Okay, number five. So I'm now going to combine what we just did in problem four with our distributing of exponents along with what we did in problem number two, which is the multiplying things. So these problems get more and more complicated as you go, and that's okay. Just take it piece by piece. So the first piece I see here is I need to distribute that exponent through. We'll write that out in a second. Then the other piece I see is I need to distribute that power through. So we're going to do those two pieces separately and then we're going to combine our answers together in the end. So I'm going to distribute my third power through so that's going to give me 2 to the third and I've got m to the fourth to the third but again power to power you multiply so that'll be m to the four times three then I'd have n to the seventh times or seventh to the third power, so that'll be seven times three in there. Then times, because remember that's what all these parentheses mean, distribute the two power through, or the square through, so that'll be five squared times m to the, now this one doesn't have an exponent on it, so remember there's always an imaginary one there. So that's gonna be one times two, and then times n to the, that'll give us a three times two. Okay, now we have to simplify this and then we'll combine those answers together. So that's going to give us 2 to the third, which is 8. m, 4 times 3 is 12. n to the 7 times 3 is 21. And then times, 5 squared is 25. m to the 1 times 2 is 2. And n to the 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so now we're to a problem just like number two. So we're going to multiply our coefficients together first. So 8 times 25 is, I believe, 200. Then we have our m's together that we can combine. So that'll be m to the 12 plus 2 is 14. And then n to the 21 plus 6 and I'm adding again because we're multiplying those. So that'll be n to the 27. And that right there is our final answer to that part of the problem. We'll do the remaining worksheet on another video, just in case you want to review this one again and review your properties again. Then you can come back and finish that one up.